cost of goods. We get asked all the time, how do we calculate our cost of goods? Super simple. Let me show you. Okay, so let's do a breakdown of our cost of goods on our number one selling candle here, our sugar lemon. So to calculate our cost of goods, we want to add up everything that goes into making this candle from the inside, the candle itself, to the packaging and the vessel around it. Uh, breakdown of numbers. For us, the wax is about $1.25. The fragrance oil comes to about $1.50. It's the most expensive part of our candles. Our wick for this one is 10 cents. And then our wick sticker that's adhering it to the bottom is another two cents. Sticker on the bottom is two cents. The label on the front is about 35 cents. And um, then the vessel itself is another dollar 25. And then we have a lid here that's about 80 cents. All in all, that's about 545 in making this candle. However, that does not include shipping. You got to make sure that you are including those shipping charges of the, these products coming to us. Not what we're sending out to the customer, but the shipping charges when you order from the supplier and they send you everything. So all in all, this ends up being about $6.05 for us. Now, how do we keep track of that? We use Inventora. It's a great software that when we buy anything online from our suppliers, we right away go ahead and add all or add all those numbers into the Inventora software. You can also do this with Crafty Base. We love Inventora. We've been there with them since day one, but there's other options out there just to let you know. But Inventora has been fantastic for us. So what we do is we put all those numbers into Inventora. So when I bought this box of wax and it came to $140, and then I bought the fragrance oil that was $30, and I bought these wicks and, you know, there was 15 of them for $10, and then we bought 200 labels and they were 40 cents a piece. You put all of those numbers into Inventora. Oh, you also put your shipping in there. So the shipping charge that we had to pay to all these people. So we put all of that in Inventora. Then we build our recipe. So we say, hey, we need uh, nine ounces of wax. We need 0.8 ounces of this oil and 0.2 ounces of this oil because it's two of them combined. Whatever wick we're using, the wick tab, the label, everything. We put that as a recipe in inventory and then it will build out exactly what the cost is. So then you know exactly what this is. Now, what's great about it is also it will fluctuate based on, oh, if I buy bigger bulk, the thing is going to be cheaper. Shipping is going to be less once you get to a threshold, especially like with UPS. So when you get to that hundredth weight, the shipping is reduced. So next time I order something and it's a larger order in bulk, I put all those numbers in inventory and it knows exactly where it all goes. So it will adjust your cost of goods a little bit, which is fantastic. So you always know. What do we not include in our cost of goods? Labor. We do not include labor. So be, the reason for that is I can make six candles and it's going to take me an hour and I can make 30 candles and it's going to take me an hour. The reason for that is I've got to melt all the wax and there's time involved with that. And then it's how many candles am I making in one batch and the pouring. It doesn't equate from six candles to 30 candles five times as much work. It's not nearly as much time either. So we do not include our labor or payroll in our cost of good. That's a whole other bucket that we add those numbers into. So our payroll goes into our overhead bucket that also includes like our, to keep our lights on, our utilities, our rent, insurances, things like that. When you're first starting out, it is important to make sure that you're covering your cost of goods. I would not uh, worry quite as much about your cost of labor. And the reason for that is you're going to quickly, hopefully scale to making more and more at one time. So you might spend a couple hours making two or three candles. And then in a month from now, oh, I'm making 10 candles at a time. I would not worry about your labor until it, you're getting consistent with it. And then you're like, oh, I need to start paying myself my time. When we're first starting out, this is a hobby. Like we're trying to make sure that we even have a product that's viable. So don't worry about your labor cost as long as you enjoy doing it. That's my tip on that. That's it. Super simple to calculate your cost of goods. If you use a software like Inventora, I, I do have a link below. If you want to check it out, there's a free version. You don't have to pay for it if you don't want to, but it's super simple, but it's always good to know your numbers because in another video, we will talk about pricing candles and you've got to know your cost of goods if you're going to price accordingly. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I would love for you to subscribe. Also come check out our website where we've got a candle making course. We've got a tight community of people that are always helping each other. No spam, no negativity. So check out igniteyourcraft.com and come hang out with us. Take care.